Hello, I'm Mukaila Kabongo, and on this edition of the LCTV News, City of Lynn to launch comprehensive planning process, statewide MCAS results, preliminary election results, the Real Literacy Campaign kickoff, Guatemalan flag raising ceremony, and more. On the Lynn Lowdown, we talked with North Shore Community College President William Heineman. Here's this week's LCTV News for Thursday, September 23, 2021. This episode of the LCTV News is brought to you by Columbia Insurance Agency. Serving the Lynn community for over 60 years with home, auto, and business insurance. The City of Lynn will be launching its first ever comprehensive planning process. Vision Lynn will focus on robust community engagement to help create a document that captures the vision, values, and goals of the community. Vision Lynn has been a priority for Mayor, Mayor McGee since taking office. The City's planning department will give residents, business owners, and stakeholders the opportunity to share their vision for the future of Lynn. Residents are welcome to take part in the initial Vision Lynn survey, which is available in eight languages. The survey can be taken by texting hello to 781-417-3778 or visiting lynnincommon.com slash visionlynn. Those who are interested in being on the committee are encouraged to apply for the Vision Lynn Steering Committee by October 17th. Earlier this week, the Department of Education released a statewide MCAS test result from the spring of 2021 exams. The results showed that the gaps in the students' knowledge of math and English compared to students in the same grade pre-COVID were fewer. Few students met or exceeded grade level expectations. The test showed that 46% of students in grades 3 to 8 scored or meeting expectation or higher in English language arts in 2021, and 33% did so in math. This is a 6% drop from the 52% in English from 2019 and 49% in math. High school sophomores scored 64% in English language arts, which met or exceeded expectations compared to the 61% in 2019. For 10th grade math, 52% of students scored meeting or meeting expectations or higher compared to 59% in 2019. On Wednesday, Tech Goes Home, a nonprofit organization aimed to eliminate digital inequity, announced its partnership with community-based organizations in Essex County to help expand digital inclusion. The organization in this partnerships includes North Shore Community Development Coalition, Make It Haverhill, Lawrence Community Works, digital inequality has prevented thousands of residents across Massachusetts, especially those in low-income communities, communities of color, and seniors from accessing the critical resources needed to improve their lives. With this partnership, Tech Goes Home will expand its programming in key communities in Essex County, which includes Lawrence, Haverhill, Salem, Lynn, Methuen, Peabody, and Gloucester. Essex County Community Foundation was a key contributor in the partnership as, the, as they awarded Tech Goes Home with a grant of $250,000. It's now come to two candidates vying to become mayor of the city after last week's preliminaries. Darren Sear and Jared Nicholson advanced in the mayoral race. Nicholson and Sear beat out Michael Satterwhite in the preliminary election. Nicholson led all voters as he received 39.7% of the votes with his 3,256 votes, while Sear received 31.9% of the votes with his 2,605 votes. The two candidates will appear on the November 2nd ballot. 
Michael Sadawat filed for a recount on September 20th, but the city made the decision to not conduct a recount. In the race for Ward 3, Councilor Coco Alsung received 873 votes, while George Mamateus received 478 votes. The two candidates will both advance to the November 2nd election. In Ward 2, Rick Starbird, rec Rick Starbird received more votes than challenger Elizabeth v Figueroa. Starbird finished with 737 votes, while Figueroa finished with 395 votes. In Ward 4, Rich Colucci received 99 more votes than challenger Natasha Meji Madri. Colucci finished with 414 votes to Meji Madri's 315 votes. In the race for school committee and city council, no candidates were eliminated. The four incumbent at-large councilors received the top votes. Brian Lapierre received the most votes with 3,920, followed by Hong Nett with 3,841. Third most was Bar Buzzy Barton with 3,606, and last was Brian Field with 3,284. Nicole McLean led all challenges with 2,682 votes, followed by Jose Encarnacion with 1,977 votes, and Marvin Hippolyte with 1,572 votes. The six incumbent school committee members all held on to their spots. Topping the ballot was Donna Coppola with 3,985 votes, followed by Lorraine Gately with 3,749 votes, and Brian Castellanos with 3,245 votes. Newcomer Tiffany Magnolia finished with 2,855 votes. Lennon Pena received 2,752 votes, and Sandra Lopez received 2,518 votes. Lastly, Daniel Richard received 2,111 votes. Eric Dugan received 2,380 votes, and Posan Un received 1,714 votes. For all election updates, make sure to visit lintv.org. Last week, North Shore Community College received a grant to help fund the Educational Opportunities Center. The $185,000 grant will help support unemployed workers, low-wage workers, and returning high school and college students who are entering or continuing a post-secondary program. The, edu the Education Opportunity Center's program provides a variety of services for students such as academic and personal counseling, college admissions information, and financial and economic literacy. A lead man has been sentenced to six and a half years in prison for illegally possessing ammunition. Paul Votano arraigned, was arraigned the sale of a Roman Cougar and an AK-47 rifle and more than 300 rounds of ammunition with a, co with a cooperating witness back in September of 2019. Votano, who is, previous, who is previously convicted felon, was prohibited from possessing firearms and ammunition. Votano pleaded guilty to one count of being a felon in possession of ammunition in the spring. Votano's six-year sentence includes, includes three years of supervised release. Lynn police have arrested a man in connection with the shooting that took place at Brothers Deli last Wednesday. Deontay Curry of Dorchester was arrested Saturday and charged with trafficking 36 plus grams of a Class A and Class B drug, assault with a dangerous weapon, illegal carrying of a firearm, using a firearm in commission of a felony, and discharging a firearm within 500 feet of a dwelling. Police took Curry into custody after his vehicle was stopped. There, they observed large amounts of narcotics in Curry's vehicle. A search warrant was executed and 68 grams of heroin, fentanyl, and 38 grams of crack cocaine was discovered. The shooting from last, from last Wednesday remains under investigation. On Tuesday, The Rio kicked off its literacy campaign to bring over 200 li little libraries to Lynn, and LCTV was on the scene. The real program kicked off its campaign for literacy on Tuesday at Cali Park. The real program is mission is to improve literacy and the concept of the fact that the children don't have access to books and the opportunity to read when they need to and want to, that's what we're here to do. In this initiative, which Jan has organized, they're getting people to, to take responsibility for keeping the uh, libraries full of books mm -hmm. because perhaps some neighborhoods won't have the resources to be buying books. Jim Plord wanted to reinforce the importance of literacy to the youth. 
Well, if we're going to help make this world a better place, literacy only the only communities that are successful in any country in the world are the ones that have literacy. Education is key to getting people out of poverty. Studies show kids who do not know how to read and write will fall behind in their peer groups. If we don't give children the opportunity to read and write, they're not going to grow up reading and writing. And what's happening now is our generation now is less literate than a previous generation. And that's a problem for us as a nation. I think research suggests that if it's a child's not reading by third grade, they're probably not going to finish high school. That's right. So literacy is really key. It's a big moment. Two, three. Yeah. On September 11th, the annual Goldfish Pond Fun and Flea Market took place at the pond and LCTV was in attendance. So this is uh, the Goldfish Pond Fun and Flea Day. Since 1980, we've been having flea markets here at the Goldfish Pond. We have vendors all over the pond and they sell various goods or they could be artists or they could be politicians or they could be the uh, Lynn Community Health Center vaccine clinic that we have here today also. Coming up in October, we are celebrating our 40th anniversary as an organization, the Goldfish Pond Association. We are having a parade and this parade's going to start at Lynn City Hall and it's, we're going to have a horse and carriage and a period actor dressed up as the Marquis de Lafayette who actually came by this very pond uh, back in 1824. So we're going to recreate that parade ride and we're going to have the, our Marquis de Lafayette come down here and he's going to cut a big goldfish pond cake and we're all going to have a slice. All the money today that we've raised through table vendor sales and our big table and our raffle will go towards um, beautifying this lovely neighborhood of ours here in Lynn. The ninth annual resource fair took place at the DMAX Family YMCA this year and LCTV was on hand. My name is Judy Van Coyman. I am founder and president of Those Who Can for Those in Need. We hold an annual resource fair every year and this year is our ninth annual. I can't believe it's been that long, but uh, we moved the resource fair out of Winthrop and now it is held in Lynn. And we have a brand new facility, thanks to the YMCA for letting us host the fair here. And we have all kinds of organizations here in um, from around the greater Boston and North Shore area. And they, there's something for everybody. Life issues um, is what um, I call it. So I um, piggyback off of my life issues cable show and have started this nonprofit in memory of my husband. So it'll be, it was 13 years ago that he passed away. So I love doing this. If, if one person can be connected with a resource, then I know that it's all been worth it. So um, next year, we hope to have it again here in Lynn at um, the YMCA 40 Neptune Ab uh, Boulevard. And um, everyone is having a great time. The magician is just starting. We had the re uh, rainforest reptiles. So something for everyone. So. Last Wednesday, the Guatemalan flag raising ceremony took place outside of City Hall in celebration of Guatemalan independence. And LCTV was in attendance for the celebration. And uh, the politicians, obviously, coming over here to represent and be with us.
for the sports update. Lynn Classical Lady Rams moved to 5-0-2 on the season after their 5-0 victory over Everett on Tuesday. Jada Mateo scored three goals and assisted on one for the Lady Rams. They'll look to gain another victory today when they take on Malden. Lynn Tech boys soccer team remain undefeated as they shot out Greater Lowell 1-0 Tuesday to move to 5-0 on the season. Erickson Licardi scored the lone goal for the Tigers. St. Mary's boys soccer blanked Arlington Catholic 8-0 Wednesday afternoon to, to, be, to go 3-3 three three on the season. Nick Miller had two goals for the Spartans, while Jacob Gorino had a chance and Chance Bonafici each had a goal. The Spartans will take on Kip Academy Saturday morning at Manning Field. Marco Escobar's two goals was not enough for Kip Academy on Monday as they fell to Stoneham 6-2 for their first loss of the season. The Panthers, the Panthers will look to bounce back Saturday against St. Mary's. Lintech girls soccer team moved to 2-4 in the season after their 2-1 loss to Minuteman. Sharon Vasquez scored the lone goal for the Lady Tigers. St. Mary's football team moved to 2-0 on the season after their 62-14 victory on the road against Bellingham. David Brown Jr. was the player of the game as he scored five touchdowns for the Spartans. Brown scored four touchdowns on the ground and returned a punt for one as well. Quarterback Ali Berry also rushed for two touchdowns and running back Derek Coulange added a rushing touchdown. The Spartans are on the road Friday as they take on Bishop Feehan. Len Classical suffered their first loss of the season against Marblehead Friday as it fell 54-20. Running back Darren Omariji rushed for a touchdown and caught a touchdown pass. The Rams look to bounce back on Friday when they visit Somerville. Then English Bulldogs remain winless on the season after their 41-14 loss to Swampscott. After going, going up 14-7 after Wesley Chandler's rushing touchdown, the Big Boos scored 34 unanswered points to blow the game away. The Bulldogs will have another opportunity to get their first win of the season when they take on Everett at Manning Field. Kip Academy remains undefeated on the season after their 29-0 victory over Tech Boston this past Saturday. Quarterback Juan Seto-Sing threw two touchdown passes and rushed for a touchdown for the Panthers. The Panthers, the Panthers defense once again had a stellar performance. Panthers defense has only allowed six points in their first two games. Kip is back in action on Saturday when they take on Georgetown. Lentech fell to 0-2 on the season after falling to Boston English 36-15 Saturday at Manning Field. Tech quarterback Tyler David and running back Regner Nival each had a rushing touchdown. The Tigers will look to get in the win column Saturday when they host Manchester Essex. Boston College Eagles moved to 3-0 on the season after going on the road and defeating Temple 28-3. The Eagles rushed for 117 yards and three touchdowns from three different running backs. Pat Garwell III led the, way for the, led the rushing attack with 48 yards on 17 carries. The Eagles host Missouri Saturday. Kickoff is set for noon. The New England Patriots got in the win column Sunday as they defeated the New York Jets 25-6. The Patriots' defense forced four turnovers as they picked off rookie Zach Wilson four times. The lone touchdown of the game came in the, in the third quarter when Damian Harris carried defenders into the end zone for a 26-yard touchdown run. Harris would finish the game with 62, carries, 62 yards on 16 carries. Quarterback Mac Jones' steady improvements in his second game as he went 22 of 30 for 186 yards. The Patriots now 1-1 one one on the season host the New Orleans Saints this Sunday. Kickoff is set for 1 p.m. The Boston Red Sox have now won seven in a row after last night's 12-5 victory over the New York Mets. Pitcher Chris, Chris Sale had a strong game on the mound for the Sox as he struck out eight batters in five innings. Kyle Schrauber had a monster game as he connected on two homers. In the top and the bottom of the first, Schwarber sent one down the middle to put the Sox on the board. Schwarber would, do, would not be done 
In the bottom of the second, his three-run homer put the Red Sox up 6-1, to one, and that would be all they needed as the Sox pitching and defense stepped up to close out the game. With only nine games left in the season, the Sox are making the push to claim the wild card spot. They open up a big series against the rival New York Yankees tomorrow night at Fenway. On this week's Lynn Lowdown, we spoke with William Heineman. Here is this week's Lowdown. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Lynn Lowdown on this rainy Wednesday. And today we have Dr. Heinemann with us, president of North Shore Community College. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, Mikel. How are you? I am great. We needed the rain anyway. So I, <laughs> That's right. I, I, I it, but it's been raining for like two months. Yeah. Uh, but how, how's everything with you? You know, school starting, starting the day after Labor Day. You're going to have kids back on campus this year. Just tell me how the process has been for the, the school to get ready for to welcome back the students. Yeah, so great question. Our classes start Tuesday, day after Labor Day next week. We have been trying to figure out sort of what to offer this fall in the midst of the pandemic uh, since all the way back in, in the late winter. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things we did was survey students then. We said, what, do you, what kind of classes do you think you're going to want to take uh, by the time we get to the fall? And it was interesting that a majority of them were saying at that point they'd rather still be mostly remote or online. And um, so that's what we planned for. And over time, it became clear that there probably was some more interest in being on campus as well. So we have a mixture of both fully um, on-campus courses for the fall, also fully online classes. And then we have four or five choices in between different mixtures of types of remote in in person yeah. so lots of choices for students and i would imagine also because there's so many students not only from lynn but surrounding areas too that probably would prefer to do the online courses just because it, it might cut, cut the way for the for the commute that they have because they've got kids from chelsea maybe there's some kids probably from boston that yeah. Might come here, so that, that right. might play a factor as well. Right, I, the convenience factor. Yeah. I think one of the not many good things from this pandemic, right? But one of the good things is a lot of students realized that they could do uh, college courses remotely or online, and that it's really convenient. You're mm -hmm. cutting out that commute. You have a little more control over your schedule. So I think a bunch of students that maybe before the pandemic never would have uh, chosen those types of courses mm -hmm. now actually prefer them. How is how's it been with the for the professors? How how has the remote learning affected their ability to teach? Have the what kind of reviews have you received from them? Yeah, so it's a great question because uh, some of our faculty had been teaching online courses for years, mm -hmm. so this was not a huge change for them, and and they like it. But one of the reasons they were already doing it was because they they like it. But um, a lot of them weren't ready uh, mm -hmm. to do that, and so. Uh, it was really challenging for them. We had to uh, help them uh, to learn how to use the technology. And there's also just an art to teaching online that's different yeah. from teaching in the classroom. But most of them have really taken to the learning and have found there were things they enjoyed about it as well. We do have some faculty who are itching to get back in the classroom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. For, for you, coming into this position, you know, it's been like two, three years now? Uh, I've, been, I've been here at, at North Shore for two months. Two, for two months, two months. Okay, <laughs> coming into this position and then being, being new to the position, and this is what you have to deal with. How is that as a president of a, of a college? Sure, well, it's a great question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the thing is I was at Northern Essex Community College for about 25 years before this. Mm -hmm. So the two colleges aren't exactly alike, but a lot of the challenges are the same. And so I had been dealing with the, the pandemic there as the, the vice president of academic affairs. Mm -hmm. Some of the same challenges, how are we going to offer courses, how are we going to make sure students are getting what they need. Mm -hmm. So um, it wasn't completely new, but it was new in terms of learning what North Shore uh, Community College was doing and what the plans were and getting to know all the key people here. So it's it's been really interesting and mostly good. I mean, mm -hmm. it's nobody's having fun uh, in this <laughs> pandemic, but um, but it's really going well so far. 
And you know, in the school also this summer you got put together a few events. You had the you had the the bash over there. You had it um, twice this summer in July and recently, right? A couple of weeks ago, you right. you had the bash to get, get the community more to get the community to know more about the college and the things they offer. You know, just talk talk to me. How was that overall? Those two events that you guys held this over the summer. It was great. You know, we were we called them the block party, mm -hmm. and uh, we had uh, we had one in July and one in August. Uh, they were both on Saturday mornings and early afternoons. And, you know, the real goal of those was a free vaccination clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, we're really trying to encourage uh, future students, but any member of the community, to get vaccinated. And uh, so we made some partnerships in, in the community so we could have the, the vaccinations there. Uh, but we also thought it's a great opportunity for people to get to know the college, get to know the school. Um, and get to know each other. And, um, you know, we had a pretty good turnout at the first one in July, and then this last one uh, about 10 days ago. Really, really large turnout. Mm -hmm. So that was exciting. And there were games, and there was food, and uh, a little bit of a mixture for, for different people. Yeah. And we're seeing now more students after graduation that they're utilizing community colleges more. They're not going straight to four-year universities. Especially in Massachusetts now, I believe community colleges are free for students. Uh, some community colleges are, are free for students that live in a certain area. Am I correct on that? Well, there's a, a number of different programs uh, mm -hmm. that try to get close to, yeah. to being free, but one of the really tricky things about free is people, some people define free as, well, you don't have to pay any tuition. Yeah. Um, but the problem is, well, there's books still yeah. and, there's, and there's other things. And there's also the cost that's involved in going to school and not working, you know, those hours, mm -hmm. right? So there's that cost as well, and childcare if if you have to put your kids, uh, you know, in, in childcare to go to school. So you know, it's not free in in that sense yeah. of everything's yeah, covered. Good. But you know, we have a promise program, for mm -hmm. instance, that's designed to cover those direct costs. Yeah, can you talk about the importance of just the, you know, some kids they they may have the they probably have the grace to be to be at a big university, at a four-year university, but then they opt to go to yeah. the community college for two years, get get the grades, get the take some of the classes that they need they would need to take, and if they graduate from the community college, they go if they move on to university, going to that community college, you can get your tuition cut in half Correct. because of that associate's degree you got. And a lot of community colleges have relationships with universities and stuff where students, if they graduate, they get their tuition cut in half. Right, yeah, so there's a bunch of programs around that. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons to start at a community college. Uh, the class sizes are almost always smaller at a community college, and especially if you're just sort of wanting to get your feet under you mm -hmm. uh, and get confident with college level work, it's, it's a great place to go. Our professors have really the same talent and degrees that uh, the professors at four-year colleges go. And as you said, uh, it's about half the price of a public um, college, and it's probably more like a third or even a quarter of the price of a private uh, four-year college. So it's really affordable, and of course it's convenient. If you mm -hmm. live in this, uh, in this area, it's, it's a quick commute, or as we were talking about before, you can get your classes online. So it, it really is um, a great way to start, and as you say, then um, depending on the program you're in, the Massachusetts has something called the Commonwealth Commitment mm -hmm. that locks in your tuition for the whole four years. Neither of the two schools can raise the tuition on you mm -hmm. from the beginning, so you can plan. Um, and you know, when you graduate with that bachelor's degree, you put that on your resume just as you would if you were there all four years. Mm -hmm. De definitely. Now, what are some what are some of the things that you have in mind that you're gonna you are gonna you plan on working on as president of North Shore Community College? What are some of the stuff that you have? Moving forward, you know, every every professor president has like a five year plan or so. Sure. Do you have so? Do you have so, some of that laid laid out already? I do, uh, and and it's also important in a college to really involve the faculty and the staff and the students in that planning as well. So what I would say is I have ideas right now, mm -hmm. and we're we're going to spend the next year actually doing some strategic planning and and really figuring all of that out. Mm -hmm. But some of the ideas I want to focus on is, first of all, making sure here in Lynn that students have access to more of our programs. Mm -hmm. uh, there's somewhere between 80 and 90 associate degree and certificate programs students can take 
at North Shore Community College, but only about half of those are accessible here on the Lynn mm -hmm. campus. And so I really want to work on getting more programs based here um, and using technology in ways that allow students to come to the Lynn campus and connect um, with the Danvers campus mm -hmm. that way, as opposed to always having to, to drive or take the bus. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a big one for me, and especially health programs and programs in science and technology, because I'm sure, as you know, a lot of the, the best jobs in the, in the Boston area are, yeah. are in those fields. Yes. So yes. many jobs, so many openings right mm -hmm. now. Um, so that's something that's really important to me. And then, you know, I've been using this analogy. There's, there's a big difference in baseball between hitting 200 and 300. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if somebody didn't know anything about baseball, they would say, those both sound like pretty bad averages, right? Yeah. The, the first guy's missing eight out of 10 and the next guy's missing seven. But we know that at baseball, hitting 300, you're a very good player. Yeah. Hitting 200, you might not be on the, on the team much longer. Yeah. Um, and it, a big goal for me is at community colleges for us to be hitting more like 300 mm -hmm. than 200. For the students that come to our schools and succeed, they really improve their lives very significantly. Mm -hmm. But I would like a bigger percentage of those students to have that experience. Mm -hmm. And um, that'll, be, that'll be challenging mm -hmm. work because our students often have a lot of challenges that aren't actually academic. Yeah. And the college specializes in helping you with, with academic challenges. Mm -hmm. And they might, you know, they might be working two or three jobs, they might be um, dealing with, with housing issues or child care issues. So a, a big part of that goal of, of hitting 300 in, instead of 200 uh, for us is making partnerships with the community. Mm -hmm. So other organizations that specialize in things like child care or, or housing or, or food security, um, we're working together with them so students can sort of concentrate on the studying yeah. and not worry about those other yeah. things. And you know, another thing, there's certain, there's athletes that used to, that former athletes that at the time went to North Shore Community College when they had the basketball program years ago, then, you know, budget reasons, they had mm -hmm. to get rid of the program. Is there, is there a possibility of bringing the program back? Mm. Is, it, was, is that something that you're considering or that you uh, would consider? It, it, I would certainly have my, my uh, you know, my mind open to all ideas. Mm -hmm. Athletics wasn't um, the, the top thing on my mind, but I can tell you Northern Essex, where I came from before this, has a strong athletics program and it attracts students that maybe otherwise wouldn't come to college, and that's a really great thing. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I'm sure, as you know, the, it requires a certain amount of facilities mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, money and, and support and finding good coaches and, and all of that, but I'd certainly be open to, um, to considering that as, as one of a number of things that would serve these communities well. Yeah, definitely. How much are you guys use, utilizing the community is utilizing the greenhouse that you guys have over there. Is there you guys are, par, are in partnership with certain uh, organizations in the community to for that greenhouse? We are, and 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 there's some programs with with other educational institutions. For instance, mm -hmm. the pandemic has obviously kind of um, put a put a few obstacles in the way of of doing that. It's a it's a you know closed in space, obviously. But we're looking forward um, to to pushing that. Uh, particular program, our horticulture program, mm -hmm. um, a lot more, uh, and and making a, as you say partnerships in the community. Yeah, definitely. I wanted to circle back to something you said earlier about Boston and the, med the medical field and stuff. You guys, the nursing program over at North Shore Community College, that's that's a big program. Yep. A lot of a lot of students, especially students of color, are in, right. all enrolled in that program, and the demand now. It's pretty high because yeah. of everything that's going on. You know, can you just talk about how that that program has been just a staple of the of community college and throughout the years? Yeah, so you're right. Nursing programs, uh, in many ways, are the are the superstar program in, in almost every community college, and it's certainly true at at North Shore. And part of that is just it is such a. a profession that's in such demand mm -hmm. in the community, and they do amazing work, right? I mean, we've seen so much through the last year and a half, how, how much sacrifice nurses have made to take, take good care of people. So the yeah. community needs nurses. 
Um, and it's a challenging program. It is not easy to get yeah. through. Uh, but of course, that's the way we would want it, right? If we're sick in the hospital, we want somebody to take care of us that's really had, had a great set of training and educational mm -hmm. uh, opportunities. So, you know, it is a, a staple of our healthcare programs. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other programs, though, that we like to make sure students know about because, you know, maybe nursing doesn't, for whatever reason, work out for, for somebody who thinks they're interested in it. Uh, you know, we have a respiratory technology program. Uh, we have a, a rad tech program for, for people who are interested in, you know, x-ray technician kind of, mm -hmm. kind of work. There's all sorts of health programming yeah. that's around the business side of health, mm -hmm. the, the billing, the insurance, that, that kind of stuff. So there's a lot of different ways people can get involved in a, in a health career, and all of those jobs tend to be pretty good paying. Yeah, yeah they're, and they're always in need. So yes. you would never, yep. you'll never be in need of one. Uh, is there, does the, does the school have any type of agreement or c relationships with the high schools around here as far as getting the students in there for after, high, after graduating? Or even if they're still in there, is there any type of programs that, you, that the school has for high school students? Yeah, absolutely. It's a big and growing part of, uh, of the work we're doing. The, the Commonwealth uh, has, has recognized that students that get a chance at some high school uh, experience in college and earning some college credits while they're in high school, actually uh, much higher percentages of them are likely to go on to college, um, not need to take any uh, developmental classes, and then graduate and go on to, uh, to, to great outcomes. And so we have a strong early college program. Uh, we're working with uh, here in, in Lynn with the Lynn uh, City Schools, but a bunch of probably eight, nine, ten districts in, in the North Shore region. Okay. And um, different high schools are interested in doing that a little bit differently. They all have their own class schedules. Mm -hmm. They all have their own student bodies and needs. So we try to cater and customize um, to each school's needs. But um, it's really uh, a great way for high school students to, to build confidence, and it tends to be even less expensive than our normal price for community college students, which, mm -hmm. as we noted before, is much lower yeah. than, than you generally pay at other types of colleges. So students can get a head start and, and save quite a bit of money through a high school program like that. Yeah, and with those programs, too, even if they don't go on to North Shore or they go they go on to four-year universities, they have a better, they're more prepared for the college life just from doing that program. You know, they have a better chance of going through going through four years of college and not having to leave for whatever reason, have academic issues. Right. And just they they know the path and they know the foundation of what it's like to be to be a college student and how you could manage your time. And be successful because that's one of that's one of the biggest things with students with high school students when they first get on campus is time management because they, right. they have so much they have so much more time management that they never had when they <laughs> were in high school so it's, it gets a little overwhelming you're a lot more responsible mm -hmm. for your learning and for getting your homework done and doing doing all the things you need to do in college. And you're right, it's culture shock a lot of times yeah. for people coming out of high school where it's a lot more structured. They're sort of reminding you constantly um, that homework's due on Friday. Yeah. And, you know, in, in college, that's much less typical. Yeah, I know we've all, you know, some of us have, have had that experience. <laughs> but, you know, you get through it as long as you get through it. Well, running out of time, but this was a great conversation. I really appreciate you coming down to talk to us about this and giving us all the information. If they want to know more about the school, or if they want to be in contact with you just to talk about certain things about the programs in the school, please let them know. We'll email, phone number, website, where they could contact. Yeah, well, uh, northshore.edu, um, you know, has an immense amount of uh, uh, information about the college, and um, it, I urge people in, in Lynn and, and also up around Danvers to come to campus. The campus is open now. They can stop by and, and talk to an advisor or an admissions counselor. Um, so any of those ways uh, are, uh, are helpful for getting in touch. All right. Thank you for coming on. Really appreciate this. You guys have been watching the Lynn Lowdown. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen.
And now for local events from the community calendar. This Saturday, beginning at 8.30, the D-Max Family YMCA will be hosting their annual stride along the Tide 5K in Nahant. Registration starts at 7.30 and race begins at 8.30 at the Nahant Life Saving Station. Also on Saturday from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m., the Grand Army of the Republic will be hosting an open house. Residents will be able to experience the three floors of artifacts and stories from 1866 to 1919. The Grand Army of the Republic is Lynn's Civil War veteran built hall named for General F.W. Lander of Salem, the first Union general to die in the war. The Knights of Columbus Cornhole Tournament will also take place this Saturday from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. Registrations begin at 11 and tournament begins at 12. This annual fundraiser is to help benefit the Knights of Columbus Council. On Tuesday, the Lynn Teachers Union will be hosting a forum featuring mayoral candidates and school committee candidates from 6 to 8 p.m. To find out more about the community events, visit thelintv.org and click on the community calendar. Thank you for watching the LCTV News. Make sure to subscribe to the LCTV Facebook page as well as the LCTV YouTube channel. Also visit lintv.org to watch any show at any time on your computer, phone, or tablet. I'm Mukal Kabongo. Have a great day.